guys it is yada welcome welcome back to my channel hope you guys are all doing amazing for today's video i'm doing a vlog i'm vlogging a day in my life or the day a day the day a day in my life day in my life of a christian girl in her early 20s i feel like that's such a long title it'll be something like that but basically it is currently what time um one second okay so it's currently 12 38 we just got back home from church basically every saturday at 10 we have morning prayer at church it's a really good time to come together to pray my dad always says that if you struggle to pray by yourself as a christian then maybe start praying with other people because that can encourage you to pray more you know so i love going to prayer of course you can pray in your house obviously but i think it's amazing when you can come together with, oh mm, yeah i think it's amazing when you can come together with other believers and pray and talk to God corporately. Just a heads up, I got my wisdom teeth taken out last week Saturday, so my face might be a little bit swollen still. My speech might be a bit different, um, so just bear with me. The recovery has been kind of rough. It's like a week since I got it taken out. The first few days after I got it taken out was brutal. Um, I wanted to eat so many good foods. Like my mom made a nice cooked meal, and I was like, I want to devour this, and it was so hard to eat it. I don't think I ate it. I think I had mashed potatoes instead, which I love. Don't get me wrong, but mashed potatoes every day, like that's a bit too much. But I'm at a stage where it's like kind of hurt it's not hurts it's just achy and it itches a little bit but basically right now i'm just gonna do some laundry then i'm gonna make a bit of food to eat they have a youth group tonight um it was also thanksgiving on monday coming up next week in canada so we're gonna do like a little potluck thanksgiving thing at my youth group and also it's one of our members birthday as well so tonight's gonna be fun i'm looking forward to vlogging it and we're hoping that we get some visitors tonight too so that's the day and yeah so let's get into this whole laundry business. So let me share my devotion. Let's hope I don't rant, but you know what? When it comes to Jesus, like, this is impossible not to rant about our good Lord and Savior, you know? Okay, so basically, I'm reading the book of 2 Corinthians right now. I'm in chapter 3, chapters 1 and 2 were so good. Not to rant, but chapter 1 is a powerful chapter. There's so many things in that chapter. One thing is the part that talks about comfort and how God is the God of all comfort. Like, comfort comes from God. I just mentioned that recently in a video. And so if we get our comfort from Him, then we can comfort those who need comfort, which is what the scripture basically says in 2 Corinthians 1, which is encouraging. So it's like, as God is comforting us, we're then able to comfort people with the comfort that God has comforted us with. That sounds like a tongue twister, but that's just so encouraging for me. And then another part of that chapter that's so good is the one that talks about how they were at a point where they thought they were going to die. Paul says, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Not that we should trust in ourselves, but trust in God. In other words, yeah, they're at a point of persecution where they literally thought they were going to die. But it helped them to realize that they need to trust God because God got them. And then there's a scripture that says that he delivered us from death, delivers us now, and we believe he will continue to deliver us in the future. So it's like God is a deliverer, you know? He's not a, he's not a past deliverer. Like, yes, he delivered people in the past, but he's delivering people in the future, he will, and he's delivering, pe delivering people now. And the same thing with like redeeming and like restoring and healing. Like he's done all these things in the past, he's doing it now, and he will continue to do it in the future. And that's just so encouraging. So encouraging. Chapter three, Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he mentions how they are a letter from Christ delivered by them. I like to read the Amplified Bible. People think it's too much. I think it's perfect. It doesn't exaggerate. It just breaks down the definition of words. Why and how could I say this and how could I know this? I like to look at the Blue Letter Bible app to get the Greek and the Hebrew. And oftentimes when I look at the Hebrew and Greek meanings of the words in the Bible, the Amplify gives you the definition already. It's almost as if like, if I didn't go to the lexicon, like the Greek and Hebrew lexicon, I would still be able to get the definition of it by looking at the Amplify. I'm putting you on, if you've never read the Amplify Bible, read it, like it's so good. Compare it. So as you're reading your like regular version, whether it's New Living Translation, New King James, have the Amplify on the side and read through it. And it's just, it makes, it just blows up everything so you can see and understand. Uh, it's on U version. But in the U version app, the Amplify Classic Edition gives you references for other scriptures in a scripture. The, the Corinthians, Paul saying that they were a letter written from Jesus, delivered by Paul. And it makes reference to, well, I have the, the physical Amplified Bible and the physical one gives reference to other scriptures, but the one in U version is the classic one that gives reference to scriptures. So the one I have, the physical Amplified Bible, it made a reference to Exodus. If I remember correctly, Exodus 32, 
verse 16, which is basically when God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. And it says here that he basically gave him the tablets and he wrote what's on the tablets. Let me get my notebook. Yeah, so it says that you are, so you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And then yeah, Exodus 32, 16 says, now the tablets were the work of God and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. But Paul is saying that it's so obvious that these Corinthians are a letter written from God. Why? Because of the way they were, the way they conducted themselves, the way they represented Jesus. He saw them as, it's so obvious that Christ, that you're a work of Jesus, you're a work of Christ. And that should be the testimony of every single one of us. Someone should see us and say, it's so obvious that you know Jesus. It's so obvious that you know God because you're just different. But if you're a Christian who's smoking with everyone, drinking with everyone, you know, swearing, dressing provocatively, doing everything that the world is doing, it won't be obvious that you are a work of Christ, you know? And if you're a work of Christ, his inscription is written on your hearts. Not a tablet of stone, but a heart of flesh, like a tablet of flesh. Um, that's so encouraging. That Moses had a glory. He received a certain glory. The scripture in Exodus says that when he came down from the mountain, he had a glow. And it was like so powerful that the Israelites could barely look at him. And as he came off, like when he came, as soon as he stepped off of the mountain and faced the Israelites, that glow was like diminishing, if that makes sense. And so that's what 2 Corinthians 3 says, how he had a sort of glory. And so it makes reference to, or it makes a statement where it's like, if the ministry of death, which is the law, so if you, you do these things, you live. If you don't do these things, you die. So Paul is saying, if the ministry of death has such a glory that is gone basically like it's diminished how much more the ministry of life ministry of the spirit which is you know we, we are in right standing with god because of jesus and because of what he did on the cross how much more does glory does this provide you know how much more glory does this give it mentions how the glory of moses like the glory he had on his face has gone long gone and not important not relevant per se why because the glory of the gospel exceeds and excels that like do you know how deep that is do you understand how deep that is this gospel or this glory is open to everyone because back then it's like moses had this glorious shine and the israelites like almost like there's a separation a demarcation a difference between them because moses was like god's man and like in order for the israelites to really hear from god they have to communicate through moses or aaron because but nowadays it's like we don't have to go to a mediator per se like a person and like my, my friend or my pastor to talk to God, I'm going through Jesus to talk to my father. And it's like everyone has access to that glory. Some people can spend time in God's presence, come out and they have this shine on their face. And it's not because they're a pastor or they're an, a, an apostle, but they're just a believer who's basking in the presence of God. And so that glory that Moses had today is open for everyone. Like we can all receive that glory and not have that experience and that encounter. That is so encouraging. Anyways, I am done ranting guys. Well, my mouth is itchy. I think because I'm talking way too much, but this is 13 minutes long. How embarrassing. Now I'm gonna make some food because I'm hungry. Okay guys, my sister just finished work, so I going to quickly pick her up. Uh, I'm gonna wear my big, hefty Narnia jacket. This is me, but sometimes you forget you own things. So when the season comes, oops, when the season comes where you can wear it, you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot I had this. That's me with this jacket. Well, let's get going. Traveling grace, in Jesus' name, amen. My car? It's so squeaky, like it jerks and it squeaks. Um, but in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. <laughs> Here's my 
today. Oh. Hey guys. Ew, you took a picture and I did whatever you did in this <laughs> Hey guys, so right now I'm just preparing my mashed potatoes. I'm gonna grab a bunch and peel them, cut them, start boiling them. Okay, it is so dark because it's gloomy outside. But basically, I'm finished making the mashed potatoes. I'm just letting it cool down kind of for a bit. But right now, I'm just about to pray before we, or before I get ready for tonight. Sorry, I'm really out of breath. Whew. Basically, most days, you're busy, I'm busy. The Lord understands that he gets it, that you've got things to do, whether it's you're cleaning, cooking, whatever, but it's still super important to spend time with God. Like I can't stress this enough. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I have my days where I maybe only spend one certain time with God or sometimes I don't spend as much time as I would like to, but I think it's important to make a habit where it's like, I need to spend time with God. If you guys remember, I filmed a video maybe last year called, what are your daily intentions? or daily intentions, something like that. And I mentioned how throughout your long list of things, sorry, I'm still out of breath. Throughout your long list of things you have to do every day is spend time with God, one of them, you know? Something godly related, is that one of your tasks? Or is it just, you know, cooking, baking, cleaning, going to my friend's house, picking up my dog from, you know, the sitter, this and that, and where's God in it? Especially if you call yourself a Christian, like that should not ever, not ever be the case, never be the case, right? So it's currently like four o'clock right now, and I'm leaving at 4.45. Still, I'm out of breath. So right now I'm gonna spend maybe like 15 minutes just praying for tonight's session. And we're praying that people don't just come and feel excitement, get entertained, get fed, but that they would actually encounter Jesus because you can encounter Jesus. It's not just you come and sing songs and hear a good word, but you can actually have an encounter with the living God. And we want people to experience that coming to Upper Room. Our motto or our saying is, we want people to catch the fire and stay on fire. So catch the fire of the Holy Ghost, stay on fire with the Holy Ghost. Then I'm gonna get my outfit together, do a bit of makeup, get my hair fixed up a bit, and then we're gonna get going. Sorry, this is totally off topic, but like I love rain and it's like gloomy outside, but just listen. Yum. Okay, so I just finished praying. Um, let me just share a scripture that I always, oh, that's me. <laughs> let me just share a scripture I always pray for or pray on when we're about to do something at church or we're about to go minister to people. So the Amplified says, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 25. Okay, now let's go back. So verse 24, um, and an unbeliever of an, or outsider comes in, he's convicted of his sins by all, and he is called to account by all because he can understand what is being said. The secrets of his heart are laid bare, and so falling on his face, he will worship God, declaring that God is willing among you. That is the type of encounter we want people to have when they come to my church or any church, or you know, you minister to them. Not just you come and you feel some butterflies, you feel some sort of goodness, but you have an encounter with God and you see that the stuff that's hidden in your heart is being revealed. I love when I hear testimonies of people going to church, sinner, so like deep in sin, they come to church, maybe their sister, brother, begs them to come to church. They have no interest, but they're just listening to the sermon and are like, all of a sudden the pastor starts preaching a sermon about me, about my life. And the person feels targeted. 
they're like, how does this pastor know I'm here? You know, and not that encounter, they get saved or maybe they, it's, it's a stepping stone to when they get saved. But anyways, enough of the ramble. So yes, it's gloomy outside, but we're gonna be in church. It's gonna get hot, especially if they have a lot of people there. And we love to dance, you know, we love to dance for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I feel like I should wear a t-shirt and then bring like a cardigan, not cardigan, I don't like really cardigans, but bring like a sweater to wear on top of it just in case it gets cold. So I'm trying to think, what should I wear? This looks tempting. This is from Zara. It's a cute, fuzzy pink shirt. Um, let's think. Because with my mom jeans, I'll be able to dance freely. So I think that might be an option. So I'm gonna quickly do my hair. Um, what I'm gonna do is because my hair was so old, like it's the growth is crazy. I have to put gel on the sides and here, tie it down so that when I'm styling it, my baby hairs and all the new growth is where it's supposed to be, you know? So I'm gonna use some shine and jam and just use my phone as a camera or a mirror and just put some on the sides like so. I don't know guys, but I feel like with my wisdom teeth removal, I feel so sensitive to things. Like this is so cold. And just even touching my hair, like I just feel so sensitive. Yeah, but this just keeps my hair, like it still doesn't look that great, but it's better than it being like crazy messy. Okay, it's getting dark, but I think for my bag, I'm gonna wear, or wear, I'm gonna bring my tote bag and just shove it with everything I need. So deodorant, I have an extra hairband I'm gonna put in there. And what else, mints. Because with the business line, you can't chew gum. So mints are imperative, super important. Tonight's perfume, I think I might go with You're the One by Body Works. Super good. It's very masculine and feminine and it smells expensive. So I'll just, I OD all the time with perfume. I feel like it's good. You don't want to smell stinky. Look at this food. Praise the living God. How's the food? Very delicious. How's the food? Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, well, the way you're chewing, I'm assuming it's good. Awesome. 
Hey guys, look at my cake. Look at my friend. I ain't your friend. So stop eating. Not Elijah. It, it stops here. Not Elijah. King. So we played Mafia. Mafia is like our go-to game in upper room. And guys, I was in Mafia twice. But the first time my sister dealt the cards, she had to take them back because she didn't do it properly. And I had the Mafia card, the Joker. Next round, I was Mafia. And I got like voted out. Mafia is such a fun game. I know it's like a killing game, like who kills whoever, but we like to keep it friendly. So we say eliminate instead of killing because we don't, we don't kill people. Mm. I like tea so much. says but i can't tell you what it means because i learned how to read korean in my second year of university so listen this says um uh Tesoto, Juanro, Haipo, Aroji, Aroji, Esoto, Woro. If you understand Korean, you may have understood a little bit of what I said. Honestly, my eyes are closing. Your girl is tired. Let's go back to my room, put some Vaseline on, and get even more ready for bed. Okay, I am in bed, obviously. So that is basically the end of this vlog. It's 12.02. So usually, guys, like, let me be completely real and honest with y'all. Most times in the evening, I knock out. Like, I may go back to a verse I read in the morning Go to my Bible app and go back on my highlights, like things I highlighted, just try and meditate. But so most times before I can even talk to God, I'm already sleeping. I'm just genuinely curious to all the Christians who are watching this, which time of the day would do you find it the hardest to spend time with God? People think that the mornings are super easy 
and they find the evenings hard, which is me. Other people think it's super difficult to spend time with God in the mornings and the evenings are a breeze. I'm just curious. Anyways, here's my notebook. So I'm just gonna look at some of the things I've been reading. Like I mentioned this morning about the whole Moses and how that glory is passing. And how the gospel, the glory of the gospel exceeds and excels that glory of Moses. That glory which has the law of death the law of doom in other words like if you don't obey the law you die but the law of the spirit which is the law of life provides hope in the future guys i'm literally sleeping so yeah i think i'm gonna close the video here before i knock out but i hope you guys really enjoyed this vlog if you did please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up I'm gonna try to vlog more, um, yeah, so I'm gonna see if I can start doing more cooking videos, which I love to do, I love to cook, I love to cook, it's so much fun, but if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please be sure to subscribe, yeah. Guys, I'm tired. <laughs> That's it, guys. I will see you by God's grace in the next one. Bye! <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>